of introducing our presenters. Mandeep and Jose are public servants implementing the Ministry of Community and Social Services Analytics Operating Model. The strategy will support larger transformation efforts in Ontario's social services sector. Okay. Guys, welcome. Thanks so much. So where are we the government? So we have slides. Yes. <laughs> and we have an aversion to being recorded, but here we are. So uh, hi, and thank you very much for having us here. It is it is really quite special for a uh, for us to be able to step outside of our own bubble and to be able to uh, ask, present some of the stuff we're doing and get feedback and get a reaction. So uh, can we just ask you guys to get a microphone so it's accessible? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we work on the data analytics uh, branch with the Ministry of Community and Social Services. So we are fairly back end compared to other areas of government. We are not as privileged as the uh, uh, digital government, who are good friends of ours, of open government, who are very good friends of ours, uh, uh, walk the line between the inside and outside and have that privileged view. Uh, in fact, it's in part because of the work that they've been doing that we can be here and that they're pushing for a culture of openness. Uh, but it is, we are very much in the bubble and we're very much in looking at our own machines and talking with people very, very back into the, the, the dungeons of, of government. So uh, this is really, really a treat for us, and it's very special. So uh, thank you. Um, we're going to give you just a very quick overview uh, of, of, uh, of where we are located and what the main challenge is and what we're, who we are and what our team does and uh, how we're hoping to start tackling this challenge. You're going to see some themes emerging from other presentations, I'm sure. We're all just touching a different part of the elephant, and the challenge is how do we get everything into one big picture. And uh, so we are aware of that, and we work very closely with these other areas. So please keep that in mind as we uh, proceed. Thank you. Thanks, Jose. I'm Andy. This is my first time here, and one of the reasons I'm here is to burst the bubble, as Jose says as well. So it's a privilege to be here today, and thank you. Uh, so before we talk about the sort of radical thing that we're trying to do on the inside, um, we'll talk about what we are as a, as a ministry. So we're MCSS, the Ministry of Community and Social Services. Uh, we are, by a line item, the third largest ministry by expenditure in Ontario. Um, and we serve about, we touch the lives of about 10% of the population. Uh, the types of programming that we have largely serve those people, low income, experiencing poverty, um, experiencing all sorts of vulnerabilities in life. Social assistance, uh, which is uh, Ontario Works, or more informally known as welfare, or the Ontario Disability Support Program, uh, spousal enforcement support. These are the sorts of programs that we deliver and we're trying ultimately to improve the lives of people, improve their resilience, uh, improve their ability to um, uh, live um, happy, uh, inclusive lives. Um, so that's what we are. The challenge we have uh, is the way that we serve our programs. We're very much, um, I would say, vertically integrated. So I mentioned those programs. I can tell you right now, and if you, as you look at the, the, the slide behind you, how many people we serve. Uh, you know, we have, it's about a million people in social assistance. Um, it's about you know, 40 or 50,000 in developmental services, depending on the method that you're using. Um, what we have, though, um, is a very good sort of profile and understanding of some of those clients. But as a social assistance client or a developmental services client, but as an Ontarian that's experiencing difficulties or, or low income issues, that picture becomes a little bit hazier because we're not able to create that picture using data. Um, and effectively, the, the assertion that we're working with uh, within our branch, which is the policy research and analysis branch, and you'll hear us say PRAB a lot because we're government and we love acronyms. I'm sorry, but we are PRAB. Uh, is that um, the government's been uh, you know, trying very hard to, to, and talking a good game about evidence-based policy. The assertion we'll make is that we're not actually using evidence to the best of its capacity and ability to make the decisions we need to make uh, that will actually improve the lives of Ontarians. And so that's uh, one basic way, that's one basic assertion. The second one is uh, we refuse to believe that the way that we're doing things now currently as a sort of corporate support services for data and analytics as an organization um, is really the best way of doing it. And we have a lot to improve. And so that's what's driving us uh, to make these changes. We're 
you know, data is an enabler for us to really improve the lives of Ontarians. That's the mandate of our ministry. And so fundamentally at our core, at our heart, that's what we're interested in. Um, so you'll see here, we have a siloed view of our, our profiles. The problem it becomes a little bit more clear when you look at who our clients are as people, not as clients. Um, if you see the programs, someone who's an adult with a developmental disability or sometimes known as an intellectual disability isn't just in service in our program. They're exposed to a number of different services across Ontario. They're, they may be getting educational supports, they may be getting housing supports through the Ministry of Housing, they may be getting training and employment opportunities through advanced education and skills development. We're only looking at it through our loan lens though, and so our ability to actually see a more more holistic view of who these people are and, and the impacts of the supports, the funding, and everything else we're giving them is, is incredibly uh, diminished by our ability to bring that, that data and information together. Um, and it's the same of whether it be single parents in Ontario Works, which make up a large percentage of that caseload. They're not just single mothers and fathers on social assistance receiving welfare. They're receiving a whole slew of different services, and they're all entering those services at different counters and different front lines. And so as we try to understand who these people are, again, we're having difficulty because we're not bringing that data together to understand and get that holistic, collective, impact type of view. So, I'll pass this over to you. Is this your part? <laughs> So the, the, the challenge, as Mandeep said, is that um, the, the Ontario Public Service is trying, it's designed, it's always been designed for vertical integration. Uh, those are the silos, is if you're familiar with open government, digital government is not the, the bazaar, it's the vending machine, right? It is, it's a pipeline. Um, uh, over time, our, our protocols, our legislation, etc., they're in place to protect those silos and to prevent spillage from those silos of our personal information, of, of decision making, of accountability. The, the challenge is that with technology now, uh, that spillage is actually called horizontal integration, right? And it's the big, the big challenge that we have right now. Uh, what the government, we are trying to do digital open government, uh, MAZD, a number of different areas within government are trying to do is to start building that those pipelines, those horizontal integration, that platform that will allow us to have a more holistic view of who we serve. So this is what who we are. You saw in the first slide the organizational chart with the divisions, which were the verticals. Half of them were a, a program delivery, the other half were corporate, and each little box was a branch. So we are a branch, which were one of those little boxes. And our main function is to provide uh, support services and direct services uh, around data. So we handle a lot of data. We get basically daily copies, in some cases, in some cases monthly copies of raw copies of the transactional systems that manage uh, everything. Uh, it's very little data compared to OLG or other organizations that manage a lot more microtransactions, but it is very comprehensive in sense of, of, of what we get. Uh, and we clean, process, uh, make that data ready for analysis, do some reporting and analysis, and then we push it up the chain uh, and, and send it to whoever needs to have the access to that data so they can have a, a view of how different programs are evolving. Uh, the other thing we do is we also um, uh, have their sharing agreements with some research institutes, such as RDC, uh, that they have research centers in different universities and the Institute of Clinical Evaluation. So when you go to the census, to the Stats Canada and you see census and you see stats on social assistance, that data is coming from, from our shop. It's coming from shops like ours across all provinces. Uh, so that's kind of what we do. And we've restructured ourselves and, and us particularly, and this is gonna be, why is this relevant is gonna become obvious in a minute. Uh, we are the platform team, if you wanna call it that way. We run the platform. Uh, and then we have three teams that are the content teams, and they are the advanced analytics team. They have the econometricians, the statisticians, the subject matter experts are there. Uh, we are a very rare shop in the OPS, in the public service, because we are a policy shop. We are not an IT shop. However, we have developers with us. So we have developers, subject matter experts, uh, and, uh, and, and, and policy people in the same shop, and we have some certain access to some infrastructure and technology that most areas don't have. So why is this relevant? Because what we're trying to do for the Ministry of Social Services is we started beginning uh, building a platform. 
uh, we are the platform team within our branch, and our goal is to turn our entire branch into a platform for the for the ministry and to turn it into an open platform. You have to take it. Uh, our platform has three main elements. The first one is uh, governance, and I'm just going to fly through this. Uh, we do a lot of project management and prioritization, so we do the triage. And we've over the past year we've been working very hard setting up a process. Uh, so we can start making more informed decisions and we can start having a, 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 a comprehensive picture of what the needs of the sector and the, our ministry are specifically. So usually in, we're, that's the first crack at the silo, if you want to look at that. Have a single picture of what are the priority projects that we need to uh, invest and work on from an analytics point of view. So we're not reinventing uh, uh, the wheel every time or touching the same uh, uh, transactional system or administrative system. 25 different times to do 25 different changes. So we have one single pipeline uh, for everyone and a governance process within the ministry. Next slide, please. Uh, the single platform is tech, and uh, um, we're inside government, so we're very constrained on our, what we can do with tech. Nothing here is going to be mind blowing. Uh, but it does give you an idea of uh, what we do and how we operate. Each one of the ones at the bottom is a transactional system, so these are. Each program has a transactional system that is used for the administration of the program. We get a copy into a staging server, we model it, and then we push it up uh, in one of uh, many ways. Uh, raw data, if someone needs raw data, someone with appropriate access, that's raw data. Uh, dashboards or reports, and uh, eventually via a data feed um, uh, when they have the appropriate permission within the community. Now, we're still building this model. Um, we're up, we've been upgrading for the past two years our technology to be able to support all of this, and we are moving quite aggressively on this front. And uh, these dashboards and reports that we're also moving there. So a lot of the, the the model that we the models that we build with the data end up becoming dashboards or reports. Uh, we cannot give you a demo or show you our dashboards because they're locked on the network. Uh, as you can imagine, there are a lot of uh, uh, personal information, high sensitivity data on our warehouse. Uh, so, but if you click here, things happen. <laughs> it's, uh, it's shiny. Uh, but it's kind of the idea of um, the operational report, who are your people, who are your clients, who, what uh, type of services you provide, the uptake, uh, how long it takes to, do, uh, to get from step, uh, step trends, we do all that kind of stuff. And the plan is to have one report per program immediately because we do have an accountability and a responsibility in that sense, that's our main goal. And the second one is to start modeling across programs and start building integrated reports so we can start answering questions that we could not answer before uh, and that we still having a hard time answering, such as uh, how are people clustering programs and how programs are being clustered across a, a, a geography, gender, etc., or how people uh, move from one to the other to the other in different types of life. That's something that we are uh, still cannot do even with systems within our own uh, ministry. Our goal is to build an open platform that can do that first for our ministry, but then start engaging in a, in a more better conversation with the sector. On okay. yeah. the platforms, I mean, as I just said, open. I mean, this is the change in philosophy here. I mean, as a data shop, and I think this has been historically true in, in, in private sector and in various bureaucratic organizations, uh, the assumption is, well, we're the ones that understand the data. You can't have it. It's ours. You'll get it when you go. You go through the queue. Every element of the way we're designing, whether it be governance and the way the data and the way the infrastructure is set up, is for open platform. We no longer believe in the idea that this is just our data. Where we'll be emphasizing our efforts is to build efficiency and effectiveness in the organizations and the of duplicating tasks and the rest of it, and to build trust uh, in the data so that we can be a, the authoritative source and there's single sources of truth. But the, very, the key emphasis here that it's an open platform, again, as Jose said, for us as a ministry, for the OPS as an enterprise, and then for the broader public to utilize because this is public data, it's our data, and we are the, we should be the stewards and custodians of it, but not necessarily arbitrary gatekeepers. And so that's a distinction where we're critically uh, trying to enforce as a philosophy change in the organization. So, so for, for example, uh, uh, RDC, Research, StatCan Research Data Center, right? Uh, we recently have a, an agreement with them, uh, and there's something like 15 years of de-identified and, and anonymized data 
available for researchers through sort of universities' research data centers. Right? That's an example of, of, uh, of data, a data service that we produce for, for research. But it goes through, it's, uh, it's very granular, so it's not open data. It goes through a process of the identification and it's uh, hand managed via secure labs or secure environments uh, in a different research data centers across the, the province, country. Um, so that is kind of uh, uh, what the context is and what the challenge is. It's a, it's a challenge that we're all facing together and across the, the Ontario government. And that is where we are. We're just one of those boxes in the initial graph chart. Um, however, we are in a privileged position because we are, uh, the branch has been working with data for over 10 years. It has a lot of skills and a lot of brain power. It's really an amazing place to, to be. And over 10 years, of course, its, uh, it's uh, forecast and its models have, have endured the test of time and has built a very good reputation that has allowed our director and the team to, uh, to, to pitch this crazy idea of turning this silo into a platform and to start, a, a, and basically to open the platform. By open here, I don't mean, I, I, I use it, the, the technology definition of open, not the, the I don't know what, the political definition of open. <laughs> so, but there's a strategy, and this is what, uh, uh, what is basically driving our, our work it has been driving our work for the past two years and will be driving our work for the for the next few years. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I, I won't sort of walk the strategy, but it's five pillars. I mean, it's an analytics operating model. There's nothing sort of you know incredibly mind blowing here, but the focus again is, is what is the strategic priorities? What are the processes in play to enable that? Uh, what is data governance to build that trust and quality? Um, what are the technology tools that we need? And then really important is how do we empower people to, to a, buy into the philosophy and have the capacity necessary to do this kind of work. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're here today too. We recognize that despite the fact that we have 10 years of experience in this and we've got a great multidisciplinary team that we don't have all the answers. We do exist in a bubble and we need our, challenge, our uh, assumptions challenged uh, within that construct. Um, so from that perspective, We'll sort of walk you through going back to the idea of integrated data and what we're trying to do um, uh, and how we're sort of getting at it. So the, what happens in the OPS is that, uh, and in general in a lot of large organizations, and that's just the nature of the beast, the way technology has evolved, is uh, you set up your program, you set up your objectives, you set up your transactional system, and then your transactional system produces a report. The report that gets pushed for the decision makers to be able to, to use that. Um, every system is managed in isolation for a number of different reasons, for, for uh, in tech data quality, if you want to call it like that. In tech, it's easier, it's cheaper, uh, coherence of the data, it's easier to manage the quality at that scale. Uh, and then what happens is that data integration happens at, the, at this end, at the reports. So you have a lot of people, very smart people, start asking a lot of questions at this end. It's completely linear when it, there's no iterations, it's not circular. So um, you have a lot of different reports and then you're trying to integrate those reports at the, uh, at the, at the data point level even at the, at, the, at the end. In some cases you can do that, but then you run into issues. You run into issues such as what's the definition of this, uh, of this uh, number uh, when it was collected, uh, uh, for what time period, and you have run a number of different questions. Can you give me more data points, et cetera? And all those challenges don't happen here, especially because here you're working on a PDF or a PowerPoint, most likely. Uh, they used to have; they tend to happen further, deeper into the uh, into the data management process or the data creation process. And every step back you take becomes incredibly expensive <laughs> and incredibly time-consuming. So you have a report, then you have to, to to look for the lineage of that specific number, and then you have to go back, and then you have to uh, Depending on as far you, you go back, you have to uh, review uh, an ETL or, or a script or something. And of course, out of the 50 people you have, you only have a few of my very technical skills are very, very limited. So what we're trying to do first and foremost is to uh, push integration to the back end and make it by default. And the way we're doing that is uh, via the analytics model, the platform that we mentioned, via a prioritizing, a prioritizing projects and centralizing projects to make sure we're on the same page to a central data warehouse, which is something that can happen. Uh, so we have the two layer of modeling. We have the data modeling for the reporting of the program and then an integrated data modeling, a data model that reports on the sector 
at sector level, not at program level. And then uh, when we trace back the lineage of the specific data point, we can go to a, a model, a cube, or, a, or any form that we can query really quickly and then get that view or get more dimensions uh, just uh, simpler. That is kind of the, the goal. Right now, that only happens here, and it's changing that is incredibly time consuming and incredibly expensive. So, um, Jose mentioned uh, we are an island in the ministry, um, an enterprise, and the idea is to connect all those dots through integration. And so, what we're trying to show here is how we're just one element of that. Um, Jose mentioned StatScanner, work with the RDCs and putting, uh, it's 11 years, it's going to be more of uh, social assistance data so that it can be linked with federal microdata uh, so that you can start looking at all sorts of interesting things, not just at a federal, but at a provincial level. We also now have an agreement with ISIS, the Institute of Institute for Clinical Evaluative Studies, uh, to bring uh, the same type of data into, uh, they're a health custodian, so integrate health data and social services data. Um, and we'll actually will get access to the data for the first time. It's a bit, bit of a new thing that we're trying to do in the government. Tax data like health data, if you're not already aware, within the Ontario government are ironclad boxes on top of ironclad boxes. Uh, so we're a bit excited about that. But the idea is to create those linkages across the ministries. Uh, what you see in the yellow um, are those sort of third party or external organizations to the OPS, and inside um, is us. But we are just one piece of that continuum in the what we hope to have is a much more integrated model based on that. Uh, so, with that said, if you look back and sort of circle back to what we were trying to do from the original point, wouldn't it be great if we can start lo stop looking at welfare recipients or people with disabilities as just that and start looking on Ontarians as Ontarians and start trying to predict what their health outcomes might be based on where they live or based on what their demographics might be or based on how many times they've been in an emergency room or based on the kind of education that we've had. We already know that social assistance is an intergenerational dependency, that about one third of people that are on social assistance, their children go on to be on social assistance. So intuitively, we can figure out why, right? We know that poverty is a barrier in itself. We know that there are, there are health implications here. We know that there are social determinant of health, health issues here, but we don't have the evidence for that, right? And within the absence of evidence, what we have is intuition. And so what we're trying to do is create that holistic picture so that we stop looking at Ontarians as clients or as ministry recipients of programming, and just as Ontarians and as people, and try to predict better uh, what it is that they need in life and how to improve those outcomes holistically. So there's a, uh, so there are a lot of, there are other initiatives that are, we're following, uh, and we're very happy about uh, going around in the government. Uh, Again, Open Government, Digital Service Ontario, these are a lot of initiatives pushing towards um, integrated service delivery and uh, how do we start redesigning our services based on the user. Uh, and they are huge, and this is gonna be a huge challenge, and we're happy that there's some, there's there's the steam behind those initiatives right now, and very, very talented people in the OPS working on those. Uh, our position is that um, we won't be able to have integrated service delivery without an integrated backend and without integrated planning and policy. And what we're doing is just getting ready because our goal is that when they are ready to start doing that, we'll be ready to start doing this as well and we'll be able to work uh, together when the time comes. And from a purely administrative point of view, uh, we do cost benefit analysis and we do business cases and all that kind of stuff. However, it is uh, very, very difficult, if not impossible for most of us in a, cost in a, in a timely and, and a, a manner uh, to calculate as as, as Mandeep was saying, the, the impact that a mental health initiative could have, not only on the mental health sector, but on educational outcomes, or on social assistance, or an, an, a training program provided by MACD, for example, how would that impact the, the cost of delivery on, on the outcomes, most importantly, in, a, in a mental health at the same time, on over time in, a, in the Ministry of Children and Youth? You know? So that is a big picture that we're trying, trying slowly, slowly to build on a, a, within our sector. So over time when we are all, everyone that's touching a different part of the elephant, we learn to speak to each other, which uh, we're moving in that direction, hopefully. Uh, we, are, we are ready to, to describe our tail or leg or whatever piece we're touching in a, in a, in a holistic and, and comprehensive way. And that is kind of what we're working on right now. Uh, we are, again, um, 
there are two reasons why we're here mainly. One is because it's a great opportunity to get feedback and to get reaction. Uh, also, we live in a bubble. A bubble, ideally, it can be popped at any time. So this is very helpful there. And also to ask uh, for help from wherever you're working, uh, whether you're working inside government or outside of government, uh, to, to just ask for help. And also if you're interested in the work we're doing, we're always happy to, ch to chat. And we are uh, always uh, uh, looking for, for feedback. And... Right. That's it, thank you. So thank you guys. Um, th at this point, I think we'll field some questions. Uh, just we'll be wary of time. So yeah. Thanks for the presentation. It's very encouraging and uh, motivating to see your presentation. And uh, I have a question about the integration process. Uh, it sounds like that since you already did the, the identification, I wonder how that identification is happening, especially uh, to integrate uh, all the data editors, uh, it's uh, very critical to tell uh, even after the identification, uh, the same person from the data source A and B should be identified. So how does it, uh, is it the way you do it? And uh, for example, the identifier for the healthcare data, there should, should be something like the own number, but uh, I imagine identifier for the text should be in. And uh, how can you tell if they are the same person or not? Uh, the, the to integrate uh, those uh, two database tools? Sure, so I can do the database. So the, the, the short answer is uh, carefully and very slowly. <laughs> because the, it depends on, so each piece of, each piece of data the government collects, uh, it's collected under a legal authority. It's, uh, we just can go willy nilly and ask for, for, for uh, individual data. Um, so before uh, two data sources are integrated, there's usually two to three months, if not years, of legal work, where legal teams go through the legislative authorities, legal teams go through the, the, whether there's been consent and full informed consent and all that kind of stuff to make sure if it's possible. Some pieces of legislation have provisions for research, some pieces of legislation don't have provisions for, for research. In some cases, you may need to go back and get consent, and that will be it's a matter of emailing, mailing, physically mails like thousands of letters to addresses. Uh, We've done this. We have to do this <laughs> to get to get consent for the integration. So it takes that time. Then there are other larger external pieces of information. So for example, we may have two databases, and both have SING number, but the SING number is is uh, is uh, protected by federal legislation and cannot be used for anything. So we cannot use SYNC numbers to integrate, even though both systems have SYNC numbers. Uh, to, long story short, in a lot of cases, we end up using, doing just probabilistic matching uh, with a number of other uh, personal identifiers or pseudo identifiers, such as uh, an address, date of birth, that kind of stuff, before it gets the identified, the data. Um, the ideal is to have, uh, a, a, from a technical point of view, I'm not addressing the privacy uh, part of the question, but from a technical point of view, the idea would be have to be uh, a single identifier. Um, however, we have right now several, um, and, and it's, we don't have one universal uh, identifier. Is it very satisfying, or do you think that there should be more ways to improve that uh, identifier? There are definitely ways to improve it. I mean, a unique identifier that would be used across, like from a digital identity perspective, would make this incredibly Substantially easier, absolutely. Uh, but I would just say it's we're not alone in this problem. I mean, the federal government and StatsCan has a spine that they link to, and not in all instances of federal information that's collected includes SIG, for example. And so, as they said, um, in the same way that SIN can only be used for federal purposes, OHIP can only be used for the administration of health and not and outside of that. So, institutions like like ISIS, as I mentioned, is running into the same issue too. And so, you know, there has been a lot of advancement just on the technology side on probabilistic matching. And so. Um, it's a, it's a the pursuit that other ministries are going with as well, and just trying to link across, you know, educational systems, for example, both secondary and and and, and what comes before, post secondary. Um, 
Oh, yeah, that one. So it's been so long. Uh, so we're working through it together, and there is actually a lot of expertise and, and, and help there. So uh, it's, I don't think it's an insurmountable issue for us, at least not from a technology perspective. Legislatively, mm -hmm. we're working on it. <laughs> Jose, you kind of touched on this um, uh, through your integration process. Uh, I, I feel like even uh, for what you guys are doing, obviously is uh, exciting, but also scary. Um, uh, if, if you are sort of successful in, in this process um, and you are able to sort of uh, break this silo, uh, what gives you confidence that the policy side of things um, uh, will kind of understand uh, uh, what you guys are doing because uh, anything with policy, uh, that whole restructuring has to kind of kind of change. So uh, you know, I know you guys are part of a kind of a waiting game, and you want people to sort of uh, put it with you. But uh, uh, do you do you feel that that's going to be gonna be a big hurdle compared to uh, the whole data side of things? Questions similar by any chance to that one? <laughs> by the complete, okay, all right. <laughs> Just depending on time, I may cut it short and ask you guys to ask them individually because they'll be sticking around and have their own breakup groups. So I'll, I'll try to keep it short uh, and to the point. Uh, uh, yes, however, we are a policy show, right? So that, that answers part of your question. And like us, a policy shop, there are other policy shops. Uh, some of you guys are here. Uh, are, uh, so policy shops in the open government, in the open government, in the OPS have, a, a, over the last five years, has seriously ramped up their skill set in terms of, of the analysis, and they're demanding data. So, so there's a push and pull here. We're, we're waiting, but we're not going to be waiting. It's not like waiting for Godot. There's, we know there's a demand out there that we want to serve the demand. So that's one thing. The other thing, which is a bigger challenge, and it's a challenge that we're trying to tackle, but we need to tackle all together, is not only how to integrate data sources, but as you said, how to integrate policy work as well, and start to do integrated policy development, and integrated policy evaluation, and that is gonna be a huge challenge culturally for the organization. Uh, however, there's a lot of people thinking about it, inside and outside, a lot of them uh, uh, much, much smarter than, than me. Uh, so, uh, so we're we're all pushing in the same direction, which, which in itself is very, very uh, refreshing and very uh, gives me a lot of. Uh, I'm optimistic. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask to apologize and ask you guys to ask later individually, because I think the best part is here the pizza. Yeah. So, if you guys want to grab pizza at this point, um, please help yourself, and then we'll do the announcement section. Okay. So round of applause, yeah, please.